Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video in which we are going to take a look at volumes because in the last couple of weeks I have got a lot of requests that people are complaining their scenes are rendering longer than before or are more noisy. So we are going to look at some changes Otoy did behind the scenes with volumes that not a lot of people know about because they were nowhere declared. And we are going to take a look how to make the scenes look the same as in the old versions. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's jump right in. And welcome to Cinema 4D Land. We will also visit Blender Land later. Let's see if I can make this in a quick tip kind of fashion. So I've opened our foam scene that I made with some Octane 2023 version. And now we are in Octane 2024. So when I press render, I didn't change anything from the scene here. Then there are a couple of things to note. First of all, it takes a long time till it starts rendering. And when it does, you can see the bounding box of our foam here is very noisy and the rendering goes very slow. So if you are in a situation like this, then probably also the interface of Octane is very laggy. And in the case, if you just wanted to jump in here to find a solution, let's give it to you right now. Fortunately, this fix is easily achievable. You just have to go to your volume shader. In our case, it's on our foam object and there the Octane object tag mesh to volume and inside there, there's the standard volume. If you have any other volume type selected, this doesn't matter, the settings in there that we are going to change are the same. Now, if I may get your attention on the volume step percent, this is the value we are going to change. And there is one set it and forget it value, namely 100. And now you can see that the rendering is much faster, much cleaner, and everything is back to normal, so to speak. Now, this channel wouldn't be this channel if it was not for more explanation. So if you care for the explanation, this is next. Hi there, Raphael from the future year. I did some more tests and unfortunately there are some inconsistencies here. Because as so often, there's a discrepancy between theory and reality. What I have here is some blasphemy. So if we turn on the object, you can see Suzanne from Blender in Cinema 4D. So what we have here is a mesh to volume just as our foam and in the mesh to volume we have set the density to 10 and the volume step percent to 100. So far so good. But we also have another Suzanne in our scene. So if I enable this and also the volume builder here, you can see we have a Suzanne that's not converted through Octane but through Cinema 4D. Of course, to keep consistency, we change the voxel size to be the same, so 10 mm for both. And also, of course, the settings in the volume are the same for both. Now, let's reload the scene. And you can see the result is not the same. As I said before, the set it and forget it setting here is 100%. So we have to change the density to get to the density level of our other Suzanne. So let's go with 1000. And we can see we are getting there, but it's not there yet. So let's go for a whopping 10,000. And it's not changing anymore. The thing is, if you're changing densities and not getting a result change in your object, this usually means that the step length is too large. But how can this be? This was our chosen value. The one that was promised. The one that should end the suffering. So... What might be dangerous half knowledge here, I think that Octane in some cases can resolve the voxel density and in some cases it can't. So what we have to do is alter the volume step percent. So for example, for this scene here, I figured out that a value of one is good and then we don't need 10,000 here. We are good with one to 2,000. So let's go in between with 1,500. So we get roughly the same result as with our other Suzanne. So the mid-video conclusion here is that Otoy, by trying to make it more easy for the users to do something, made it actually more convoluted and more hard. Because now the same settings can mean different results. And this, of course, is never a good thing. So I'm hoping for that in the future this can be resolved 
and we can really get our savior the set it and forget it 100% value here. But at least you now know what dials to turn. Future Raphael is signing out, now back to the regular program. Welcome back. So what I've done here is loaded Octane 2023.1.3 and if you look at the volume step present, it's now called volume step length and it's declared as a different value. So let me explain to you what this setting is about and then what the new present is doing. For this, let me welcome you to a chart time. Long time no see. What's really important is that the following goes only for volumes that are voxels. So volumes with the capacity for varying density levels. What you can see here is a standard volume block, the kind you get in every supermarket on a pedestal. If the volume now is penetrated by a camera ray, to evaluate the volume a lot of rays have to be shot inside of it. Since this is voxel based and the density inside of the volume can vary, it's not enough to evaluate the ray length inside of the object and then shoot random rays from there. We need to get another technique going called ray marching. The old and the new version of Octane both use ray marching. There's no difference there. It's just the technique that is applied that differs. Its memorable name comes from the task it fulfills. Marching along the ray inside of the volume in steps. And those set steps have a measured length. So every once in a while there is a measure point where the density is measured as well as GI rays are spread. And the same is true for ray depth too. Unintentional rhyme again. So if we follow one of the paths here, you can see that this measurement is then taken on and for the secondary rays executed as well. So in the past, what you have set with volume step length is exactly the length between those stepping points in Octane scene unit scale. And as you might know from all the videos, a value of one is 100 centimeters or one meter in Cinema 4D units. What we haven't talked about is the underlying principle of the density, the voxels. By the way, voxels means volume pixels and therefore they're basically 3D pixels. Since the size of them is not fixed, they can be big or small, and it really depends on a lot of factors how big they are. For example, the resolution size of your simulation or how big you scaled a volume object in your scene. And all of this makes it really not uncommon to have multiple voxel sizes in your scene. Now, if you thought ahead, you might have thought of the limitations of the ray marching as it's implemented in the older Octane versions. And yes, it's completely independent of the voxel size. So no matter how dense the voxels, the step length is always a fixed length in scene units. I think you know where this is going and you're probably right. Just a small disclaimer before. As I couldn't find any information in the official documentations, and haven't heard back from the developers yet. The following is solely based on my research and could be wrong, though I am very confident it's right. So with the newly introduced volume step percent, what we have here is that with 100%, we get the exact distance from one voxel to the next. And this of course translates to different voxel densities. So if my assumption is correct, you're getting the best of both worlds, the render speed, as well as detail. Because you're not sampling one voxel multiple times and therefore wasting resources, and you're also not skipping over voxels and therefore leaving detail on the cutting room floor. Strange analogy, but I bet you get what I'm saying. Let's close the circle and talk about render times again. Because with the background knowledge you now have, it's much more easy to understand why this happens. And this is because a distance-based ray marching method is very hard to translate into a percentage raymarched method because you can have varying distances per volume object. I really wish there was a way to choose the raymarching method as a user, but since there isn't, we are stuck with the current system. And right now there's basically no translation. So if we had a value of one as a distance, that would be 100%. And for our scene, we had 0.05, this turns out to be 
So as of now, there's no intelligence measuring the voxel distances and then comparing those between the old and the new method. So when it comes down to our very small scene and the very small step length value we used, we are sampling one voxel very often. With our example value of 0.5, that means a whopping 200 times. And as all the sampling is happening in a very tight space, this not only needs a ton of resources, the ray sampling here, if you have a ray depth, is also dependent on that. Because the secondary and ongoing rays don't reach as far, and therefore the object appears darker. So as said way in the beginning, the best you can do is just set it to 100% and then forget it. Welcome to Cinema 4D land again. I want to bring up two points before we jump into Blender. First, I wanted to mention that you're not limited to 100%, you can also undersample. If you, for example, type in 250%, you're only sampling every 2.5 voxels and therefore getting slightly less resolution, but slightly more render speed. Also, this has the side effect of the volume appearing less dense. We can show you by going with 1000 and you can see clearly the effect of that. And second, when it comes to adjusting density, this is much better set in the density than with the percentage here. You can find that in the shader if you go down to the notes. And this is, I think, everything I wanted to say about this topic. And welcome to Blender Octane Land. This is our foam scene for Blender. And if we render here, we have a different outcome. We don't see the volume at all. Future Raphael here again. In the initial recording, I thought this would be a UI issue. But the research I did in the meantime indicates that it's the same thing as in Cinema 4D. As we in Blender are not relying on a native Octane conversion to get the volumes, but on Blender's geometry nodes, which is more or less the same as Cinema 4D's volume builder. So we need to get in a value of 1 into both of those slots. And now it's working correctly. Be aware though, if you export this to the standalone as an Orbix, and render it there, you're off to slow render times again, because somehow in the export process, the translation gets mangled up again. So if we go to our foam, you can see now we are at real 1% here. So we have to get this up to 100 back again. And once we have that, we get our render speeds back. And this channel wouldn't be this channel without a bonus. So in newer Blender versions, the way you create a volume from mesh has changed. If you open my scene from Patreon, this still works. You just have to set it to 1% if you are on the newest version of Octane. But if you want to build the scene from scratch, the approach is a little bit different, which I'm going to show you here. In the older version, the volume lived in the mesh itself under the modifier mesh to volume. This is no longer available. So what you can do now is go to the viewport and hit Shift A and then go to the volume and add a empty volume. And in this empty volume, the mesh to volume is available again. So if we click that and link the object, then turn off the object, we might see the volume again, but there's one thing missing and this is the material. So let's go to the volumes material and link it with the existing foam. Here we go. Again, two points. We have a foam surface here and we have doubled that. So actually what we could do is go to our object and link the original foam surface so we don't have to copy that. And to tidy up things, let's parent our volume to our foam empty and hit Ctrl P and then parent that. Here we go. So when we now select our empty, we can move everything around and the foam stays put. Very nice. And that was a small update with volumes. I hope you liked it. And again, as always, I hope you learned from it. As I said, next week, I'm going to be at Blender Conference. Maybe you're there as well. So maybe we see each other. If you see me there, definitely talk to me. I'm rather shy in person. So I am not very outgoing. All right, this should be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Let's thank those people who made this video possible my patrons.
especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen, Just a Freakin, and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers, for D Thieves, Render King, Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, BVR, Chris Fritschi, Christian Grajewski, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Graham Bagnell, James Conkel, Joel Mackimer, John Edward, Muratan Axos, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quok an Dang, Ralf, Random Capibara, Raiko, Renato Marquez, Reshock, Shamos Johnson, Shiro2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so very much for making it possible to produce those videos that you all enjoy. And welcome to the volume. There's actually very little difference to the usual program here. First of all, let me thank you for sticking with me that long. It always means a lot to me seeing your emoticons down below. Speaking of those, let's post a standard volume cube. You know, the ones you get in the supermarket, right? Though I couldn't find it as an emoticon, so I took the next best thing, which is a takeout box. But totally feel free to be creative. Next week there won't be a video, unless I somehow get to do one at Blender Conference, which I highly doubt. With that being said, I wish you a great start into this week. If you're watching this video later, a fantastic time ahead. And happy atmospherics. Bye.